I remembered it this week. It's early, but I'm trying to be on my game. All right? So we have this block. And so this week, we're still doing a half square triangle, so that's easy. You know how to do that, but I'll review it for you. But the center of this block is what I would call a traditional uh, snowball block. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a simple block to do. Um, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, so this won't be complicated for any of you, but I thought I'd go through it anyway. So you have your center square of this lovely fabric, and then you're going to have your four background squares draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the fabric. And so for step one of the snowball block, we're just going to take a background and place it on the corner. Any corner doesn't matter because we're going to cover all four of them. Okay, and I'm just going to sew on the line. So I have my two fabrics right sides together, corners all lined up, edges lined up, and I'm just going to sew. Okay, and then what I do is I'm going to do the other side. So I like doing as much as possible before going to the next step. So. I have it on this side. I'm now going to come to this opposite side and sew another one on. Because what I'll do next is I'm going to trim, press it, and then do the two opposite corners. And I only do this just in case there's some overlap. I just think it makes it cleaner where the points come together. So uh, that is the purpose of doing the opposite sides. Thankfully, I'm a speed demon when I sew, right? So <laughs> we'll come down and trim uh, just a quarter inch from that drawn line. I'll show you what it looks like. I figure I'm not going to do too much of the camera kind of up and down. I hate to make you nauseous this early in the morning. Um, and I can just as easily just kind of show you. So sew in line trim quarter inch so I have that seam allowance there okay and I'm just going to take it to my iron and press it and you guys know me I press my seams open otherwise uh, if you like pressing to one side make sure you are pressing into the center of the block to the dark side uh, otherwise potentially that uh, center fabric would show through your background and you don't want kind of a shadow look to your seam I do set my seam, so I press my iron down on the seam when it's flat first. That's called setting the seam. And then I press it open. And it just makes those stitches just kind of lock in and sink in before I press open. It just makes everything nice and tight. Okay, so I iron both sides. And it looks like this. Now I'm just going to keep going and doing the same to the other two sides. So, and the center will be done. See, I told you it's easy. Um, so this block, I love how this block looks. This center, oh, I'll show you why. So here's why. Okay, so notice this comes to the middle. This is actually overlapping the top. All right. So that's why you need to either do one at a time and go around in a circle, or you do the two sides and then the two sides like I'm doing, so that when you have this overlap, you're not uh, getting anything kind of mixed in in the middle. Like hand signals today. It's that kind of day. And I'm just making sure my seam stays flat. And then I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so there's one. I'm just going to flip over here. I'm going to line everything up. Nice and pretty. Make my seam lay flat. Okay, and then so there's the two sides. I'm going to trim just a quarter inch from the edge again to clean up all that excess, give it that nice clean seam allowance. 
All right, and then, so it kind of looks like that as I take it to the ironing board. So I'm gonna put my iron on it, flatten those seams, set them in, and then I'm gonna press my seams open. Part of why I have acrylic nails. They make a great tool to open seams. And then I'm gonna do the other side. Um, but we do have a stiletto type tool that's kind of nice that has uh, a heat resistant tip to it. So you could use it to open up the seam and kind of hold it while you're ironed so you're not melting your fingers. I don't advocate melting your fingers, that's not fun. And then I'm just going to press again. I do a lot of pressing to try to keep it flat. And I'm a steam user. I love steam. Steam is my friend. And then, voila. Snowball block. Okay, so that's your center. That's how easy it is. Uh, the rest of the blocks are all half square triangles, all of them. So remember the steps. You draw a line on the wrong side of your background and you put your two fabrics together. So the blues and the pinkish reds, coral color, um, are all right sides together with one line. So a quarter inch either side of the line and then cut them apart and press them open. Okay, so cut apart, press them open, and then you're going to trim them. So I thought I would just revisit how to trim up these blocks. Um, I feel like it might have been a while since I've done that. And um, so I just want to make sure we, we revisit what's important because trimming and making sure these blocks are all the same size, they're all four and a half, is very very important so I'm gonna move the camera this time that's why I kind of saved all the cam camera moving come down here so we have our half square triangle okay and you're gonna do this to all of the blocks and I have a four and a half square if you have not invested in this for this quilt I highly recommend because everything's four and a half um, and it just makes it easy you can do it with a bigger ruler or I could do it even with my longer ruler you know I could do it this way doesn't matter. Um, this just makes it easy because it's just all the way around. So diagonal sewn line, diagonal on my ruler. That's what I keep so that everything stays nice and clean the way it should. And so I just kind of center it. So I make sure there's the extra little bits of fabric all the way around. Press down. I'm going to trim two sides. Okay. I need to change my blade. Then I turn it so the two clean sides are to my left because I'm right-handed. And then I'm going to, once again, line this on the center line. And then I'm scooting this ruler all the way to the clean edge. So the clean edge should match this side and bottom. And the diagonal should go through the middle still. And then I'm going to just clean the other two sides. Okay. And then it's nice and clean. These blocks, which is nice, is they're just the cornerstones of this block. I'm going to come back up. All right, so these ones you trim, you set aside. Uh, the blue and white ones, you trim those guys up. And then you're going to take them, put them right sides together, match up this side. And you're going to sew down with the white sides together quarter inch because you're essentially going to make what I call fake flying geese or faux flying geese because this is a flying geese block essentially but generally this is all one piece of fabric you start with a rectangle and you add these color triangles um, but this is kind of the cheater way um, this way of doing it definitely makes sure that your flying geese um, points are nice and clean because a lot of times people struggle and this uh, center it somehow gets lost a lot of times. So uh, if you struggle with flying these, try them with two half square triangles. And then um, it's back to your basic block construction. You're going to start out, you know, and you're going to put a flying geese. I've got stuff to work with. So I start with one of these on each side. And then two sets of these, you're going to sew your cornerstones onto. Make sure you lay it out because you want to make sure these ones 
are with the color out and the background in next to your flying geese. So you want to make sure it's like this when you make it. Okay. Um, so just refer to the pictures. It's, it's easy. Just lay it out first so you don't get them accidentally turned and going the wrong direction for you. Um, but otherwise, that's all it is. Half square triangles and then this new snowball block. So hey, we learned something new this week. Otherwise, if you have any questions, if you have any problems, if you're struggling, something's not working, just let me know. Call me, come to the shop, email me, uh, mindy at quiltingmayhem.com, any of those things. Message me through the group um, or even put it out to the group. Somebody else might have struggled with it and figured it out. All those kinds of things. Just make sure you ask for help. Don't be frustrated. Just, just ask, okay? Um, and otherwise, hopefully you're enjoying these blocks, this sew along. This is one of my favorites. Um, I'm a sucker for stars, so I'm really, really, really enjoying this sew along. And other than that, hopefully you have a fabulous Friday and keep on stitching.